Here's the big one that we've been building to. It's time to understand the creation clock. Does the creation event set the moon to rule the 24-hour day to start it? Well, we have been reading this wrong for years. Wait till you see this. We are the God Culture, a group of independent researchers with no affiliation to any denomination nor organization whatsoever. We read the word and we test it as 1 Thessalonians 5.21 tells us, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. And man, it is good to be in his presence in all things as we learn more of his ways. So what does the creation account truly tell us? Well, it preserves the day beginning at sunrise, not in the evening. Can I say that? With utmost confidence. In fact, check this out. We covered in the beginning of this segment the Book of Jubilees condemns a lunar calendar and says the cycle of the moon comes in too early, 10 days too soon to be used for the calendar, and it tells us it is error to use it as it disrupts Yahuwah's calendar. But we've been holding back because this next passage in Jubilees, in the creation account of Jubilees, which is why we've held it for this video, will nail this down once and for all because it's going to tell us what is to be used to determine the calendar even when the day begins. Check this out. Jubilees 1.8 And on the fourth day he created the sun. This is the creation account in Jubilees. Same as Genesis. Very similar. Genesis has more detail on some things. Jubilees has more detail on what Jubilees is about in topic, which is the calendar, especially. Notice he creates the sun first. How do we miss that? Not the moon. The sun is first. And by the way, the Ashkenazi saying, well, the darkness was first, that has nothing to do with anything. It was darkness until he started creating. But the first thing he created was what? Light. Now, the moon is not darkness and was not created until after the sun. And that's the real question here is, does the sun rule the 24-hour day and set its start? Or does the moon, not darkness, as there was darkness all 24 hours initially until Yahuwah said, let there be light. So it doesn't work. So then light was created also impertinent as the sun is not created nor the moon until the fourth day still. Let's continue. And the moon. Well, that's second, not first, right? So those that want to look at this and say, oh, well, look at the progression, evening, morning. Well, no, 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 no. We're not even to evening, morning yet. You'll see in the creation account as well, you're already seeing sun, moon, sun, moon, light, darkness, light, darkness. It just doesn't work. You cannot interpret it that way, but you'll see. And the stars, and set them in the firmament, firmament of the heaven to give light upon all the earth, and to rule over the day, day is first, here yet again, and the night, well, the night is second, that progression is right there, and divide the light from the darkness. Now, we'll settle this for good. Which did Yahuwah appoint to rule his calendar then? The days, the Sabbaths, the months, the years, all of them? Not the moon. That's what Jubilees says. Here it is. Jubilees 1 9, the next verse. And God appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for what? What's the sun's purpose? What's it for, guys? For days, and for Sabbaths, weeks, and for months, and for feasts, and for years, and for Sabbaths of years, every seven years, and for Jubilees, every 50 years, and for all seasons of the years. Wow. Can it be more clear? The day begins with the sun. The sun rules the calendar. It's a sun calendar in essence. It's not a solar calendar like that in Egypt, which is pagan and rebuked by the book of Jubilees. It is a sun calendar, however. 
Now in Jubilees, it doesn't use it was evening and morning in the creation account. It just doesn't. It just says the first day, the second day, the third day, and so on. This is because each creation day is a yom in both books, Jubilees and Genesis, which in Hebrew is really a 24-hour day. It could also be daylight, so it could just be the daylight portion. But what it never is, is only evening. It is only evening in the context of all 24 hours. It never, ref it never refers to just the evening. And morning in definition at any time. It just doesn't work. Now, that's Jubilees, the book written by Moses, as the authority on the calendar specifically. Genesis was not. This is actually the final authority on this topic. Now, some have said, but the Dead Sea Scrolls say, we're not going to cover the Dead Sea Scrolls because we don't have to. This is a Dead Sea Scroll. In fact, one of the most found books in all of the Dead Sea Scrolls called by the Dead Sea Scroll community, Torah. So you can't trump that. Assuming they are interpreting the Dead Sea Scroll documents properly, and that is the key here, they insert new moon just as they do in the Bible, erroneously, many times. Now, how do we know? Because the Qumran community of Levite priests, you know, the actual bloodline of what should be the temple high priest and those in authority in the temple, worship exile by the Hasmoneans and Pharisees to Qumran to Bethabara, where John the Baptist lived, where he baptized Messiah. It's all right there in Scripture and has been there all along. Watch the original canon series and we prove that out. So tell us Jubilees is not just inspired. Nope. It tells us it's not just Scripture. No, doesn't stop there. It's not just canon or Bible. Nope. But Torah. And specifically, it has a main purpose. And here it is. With 14 or 15 attested copies, the Book of Jubilees is undoubtedly one of the best documented texts of the Qumran Library. Moreover, it is cited as an authoritative source. Well, no, not just authoritative. It's cited as Torah. See how they downplay, and they do this often in these such writings. Now, we'll read the actual document next. In a sectarian work, the Damascus document, and seems to have been equally important to the Qumran community. Hmm, seems to have been? I don't know. Does the Torah seem to have been important? That is ridiculous. What a ridiculous statement. But they do that in scholarly language to try to stay away from being criticized. We could care less. Well, let's read what the Damascus document says of the Book of Jubilees, because here it is. Here's the actual quote from the Damascus document. For Yahuwah made a covenant with you and all Israel. Therefore, a man shall bind himself by oath to return to the law of Moses, for in it all things are strictly defined. Wait, what is the law of Moses? That's the Torah, right? Those Moses' law is written in the Torah. Okay, the covenant is strictly defined in the Torah, right? Okay, let's continue. As for the exact determination of their times, that would be the calendar, guys, to which Israel turns a blind eye, well, that would be a rebuke of the Pharisees following the lunar calendar in error. And this is 50 to 100 AD, roughly, is the dating of this document when it was written. So this affirms what we told you previously. And we've been building to this. Behold, it is strictly defined in the book of the divisions of the times into their jubilees and weeks. That's a name for the book of jubilees, which is a shortened title of the same. How do we keep the covenant calendar? The times, especially, 
it is strictly defined in the book of Jubilees, which makes it Torah. And the authority above all documents, even the rest of Torah, on the biblical calendar, according to these Levite priests, you know, the actual keepers of Scripture, according to the Bible. Now, this was the sixth most found scroll in all of the Dead Sea Scrolls, and Enoch 1, by the way, not 2 or 3. Someone quoted Enoch 2 in comments. Nonsense. That is an occult document. Don't use it. Those are not scripture, but these are Jubilees Enoch 1, only one, though, was the third most found. So third and sixth most found documents in all of the Dead Sea Scrolls. These were canon to the Qumran community. This was their Bible. Who were they? Not Essenes, but they identify over a hundred times as the Aaronic Levite priests from the temple who were exiled. In other words, these were the keepers of scripture, period, according to the Bible. The Septuagint is secondary to their library. All writings, such as Josephus, the Pharisee, by the way, are secondary to this library. This library is a time capsule of the Bible, of the Old Testament Scripture. And even the Catholic Church's Old Testament canon of Scripture is secondary to this canon rediscovered and preserved for all of us. All but one of the Old Testament books in the modern canon were all found at Qumran. And all, only Esther wasn't, by the way. And all books found there are scripture. Watch our original canon series for more detail. Let's move on. Okay, one more, and then we go to Genesis, and it will finally make sense. But here's affirmation. The book of Enoch 1 from Qumran follows the same calendar as Jubilees, and the Dead Sea Scroll community observes that calendar as Torah. That's what they say. Any claim, by the way, that any fragment says otherwise is false and has to be, and likely the fragment is being misread. But let's go on. First Enoch 41, 6 and 7. And the sun goes out first, so the day starts with the sun, not the moon, the sun starts the day and completes its journey at the command of the Lord of Spirits. That's Yahuwah. That's the title given to him in this book. And his name endures forever and ever. And after this is the hidden and visible path of the moon. And it travels the course of its journey in that place by day. Wait a minute. Day is first again and by night. That's second. The sun starts the day, and the moon ends it. And then the rising of the sun the next morning is the new day. That's what Enoch's telling us. That's what Jubilees is telling us. That's what the Bible is telling us, folks. It's there, and in great abundance, as you have seen if you've watched all these videos of parts six thus far. In fact, the fragment some sees on, I'll address that just really quickly. We're not going to cover it, cover it, but let me address it. If you read it and understand the gates being mentioned there, because they're getting that from the book of Enoch, and if they're getting it from the book of Enoch, that means the sun rises and the day starts. That's what Enoch says. So the sun is at the very furthest point from the western gate in which it sets. Okay, so it is at the furthest point from where it sets. What point would that be? It's called sunrise. Remember, the point of reference is the gate in that passage at which it sets. So the gate in which it sets, sunset. And then it is at the very furthest point from that gate or from sunset when the day begins. When is that? That is sunrise. That's the very furthest and then it rises. And many, because then it starts to move toward, according to Enoch, that's the way it's written, it starts to move toward from east to west. And many are misunderstanding that, and it's being taken out of context. Again, we don't know whether that's on purpose or not. People are just misreading, but the point is they are. 
We are not going to cover the Dead Sea Scroll writings on this because we just showed you. The Qumran community says their Torah for keeping the biblical calendar is Jubilee. So we're going to deal with Jubilees, which we just did, and we're going to use that as the measure. Anything that doesn't measure up to that in any Dead Sea Scroll fragment is being misinterpreted and misread. So this is really already settled. Now let's go to Genesis, and now this will make sense, and we'll break it down. We broke this down on the screen for clarity. There's a lot of words there, but I wanted this to be clear. So check this out. I'll explain. And God said, Yahuwah said, let there be light, and there was light. Now light was his first creation. Get that? Yes, there was only darkness before, but the moon is not darkness, and the sun actually is not this light either, is it? Because the sun and the moon aren't even created yet, not until the fourth day. So this light also is not the sun. Remember that. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Again, still no sun and moon yet. And God, Yahuwah, called the light day. Wait a minute. Day comes first in this passage? This is the beginning of the creation account. And day comes first, not night. That's what it says. So, those that are just seizing on it was evening, it was morning, you're missing the whole entire passage in doing that. You'll see. But you'll get it. Don't worry. Because there is another timeline already established right here. We saw it in the book of Jubilees, but we're seeing it even in Genesis 1, early. It's right there. He hasn't said it's evening and morning yet. We haven't even gotten to evening and morning. We're only talking about light, day. And the light is called day, and that comes first. And the darkness he called night. Night comes second. Now, after creating all day. I mean, he just did something, right? We, we just have part of the day just passed. So why is this not accounted for? Well, it is actually accounted for. I'll show you. It's right there, but we're missing it. However, after creating all day, really from sunrise to sunset, that's what Yahuwah did, then it says, and the evening and the morning were the first day. The Hebrew word for day here is a 24-hour day or daylight sometimes, but never is it ever interpreted as just night. Now, we'll show you. So, what's here is Yahuwah created light. He established the day first and then the night. That's his calendar. There it is. After he created, which was during the daytime, it was evening, and then it was morning. It then sums it up brilliantly, as the Bible many times is, defining this pod of time as yom, the Hebrew word for really a 24-hour day, summing it up. Now, here's the problem. If one tries to only pull out of this that it was evening, it was morning, and say that's the only marker there, you just ignored an awful lot. An awful lot. In fact, a whole half of a day. Evening and morning together can make only a half a day. Yet this says it's a full day. So how can it be a full day and a half a day at the same time? Where is the other half? Well, he created light during the other half half during the daytime. And this repeats all six days of creation. That is the cycle. That is the calendar. And it has to be because the sun is the measure. The sunrise is the start of the yom, day. There is actually no way to read this any other way. And Jubilees and Enoch have already well clarified this. And again, Jubilees is the final authority on this topic. Let's look deeper. The Hebrew word used here for morning is, well, morning, but can be interpreted as the end of the night, the coming of 
daylight. We're talking about the dark hours before sunrise. How about that? You know, the hours before sunrise, which we still call morning to this day. Coming of sunrise, beginning of the day. But in this passage, it's the end, not the beginning. It's there at the end. So, basically, it also could mean bright joy after a night of distress. And it also could be, uh, as secondary, it's used for tomorrow, the next day, the next morning, depending on the use. But it's not the use here because it's the same day. We're still in one day, so it doesn't work. Notice what morning is not. It is not sunrise to sunset ever. That is not its definition. That is missing from this whole day if you only read evening and morning. Something's wrong here, right? So what part of the morning is this? Well, again, we have creation going on, then the evening, and then this word for morning, but then we have yom, 24 hours, really. So how do we divide this? You were created during the day, the 12 hours, sunrise to sunset, essentially. Then it was evening. Now, again, there was no sun, there was no moon yet, but the timing is still the same. Then it was evening, then it was morning. Which morning? The morning that is dark still before the sun rises. Let's look at the word yom. The Hebrew word for day used here is yom, used thousands of times in scripture. So this is not a rare word and its interpretation, though it can be broad, is pretty specific and most of the time it is a day okay, as opposed to night. See, it never just means night. Many times, and most of the time, it is a 24-hour period. But we still do that today. We say, oh, you know, it's a day, and we could mean 24 hours, or we could say it's a day, meaning it's sunlight. It's just the daytime, okay? But we use the word the same way, and it's pretty much the same here. Now, you see an erroneous definition here in Strong's, which is pretty standard modern scholarship, and it's inaccurate because we just saw the word for morning is never the 12-hour period of daylight. It's only morning. So it cannot work evening morning. Doesn't work for this. This cannot fit evening morning. This is either 24 hours in which evening and morning are only half of it and the other half is there, which is how we believe it's applied, or it's only referring to the daylight, which obviously is not the case because there was an evening in there as well and the word morning can refer to the dark hours and clearly does. So it's very clear. And again, the passage does not just say evening and morning. It does say yom, day. That's there every time. So yom is not evening and morning. You cannot put evening and morning together to equal yom. It cannot equal yom. Evening and morning will never equal the 12 hours of daylight. Can't work. And evening and morning will never equal 24 hours. So Yom is there in the passage for a reason. Let's not ignore it. Yom is either the full 12 hours of daylight or all 24 hours, depending on the translation, but never evening and morning exclusively. These do not coalesce, and this is erroneous. Again, Jubilees is the authority on this and already told us the sun is the marker here. It is the start of the day and warns us the moon is the disruptive force in trying to determine the day, the week, the month, the year, especially, and with specificity. So, it's inaccurate in this determination. Sunrise is the beginning of the day. We're going to go to day four in a minute, but in the creation account, the basic layout and timing is each day starts with essentially and God said, or Yahuwah, created. That's first. And when sunrise to sunset is what it's saying. That's when he created. That's when the action occurs. Then, 
It was evening, sunset to midnight, and then it was morning, the dark hours of the morning, midnight to sunrise. That is the biblical day. We see the same pattern for the second and third days of creation. These are all yom day, a 24-hour day which ends with the evening and morning. Creation begins at sunrise each day. Let's go to day four because that is the start of the calendar. And that's why even when you look at the Hebrew calendar, a Bib one or modern Nisan would be the fourth day. It wouldn't start on the first day. It would start because the calendar starts with the sun on the fourth day. And God said, Yahuwah, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day. Now that's mentioned first again. Day is first from the night. That's second. I thought the darkness was first. No, the day and the night are mentioned in order. Day first, night second. The progression's right there. So if you want to follow a progression in these passages, there it is. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God, Yahuwah, made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day. Oh, that's first again. He creates it first and it's the first to happen. Day happens first. And the lesser light, which has precedence of the two, well, the sun does. The day does. Because it's first. It is the start. And again, we already know that from Jubilees and Enoch, especially. So to rule the night, now that's still second. So night comes after day. He made the stars also. All have a purpose. But the calendar day... Sabbath, week, month, year are all based on, according to the book of Jubilees, the sun, not the moon. For the sake of this topic, the day begins at sunrise, not sunset, even according to Genesis, when we read it correctly. And it's right there. It's been right there all along. Let's continue. And God, Yahuwah, set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day. There it is first again, as always throughout these passages. The progression's there. And over the night is second. And to divide the light first from the darkness, second. So yeah, even though there was darkness in the beginning, Still, it continues to place the darkness second and gives the precedence to the light and to the sun. That's so overwhelmingly clear and abundant here. And God, Yahuwah, saw that it was good. So, he just finished creation for the day. There it is. What time are we at? Well, it's not evening yet, and it's not morning yet. See, that's how we should read this. Creation during the daytime from sunrise to sunset. He's done now, and then it was evening and the morning were the fourth day, yom, 24 hours. So he's summing it up. So he basically what he's saying here is, he created sunrise to sunset, then evening, then morning, before sunrise the next day. Yum. This is setting the precedence definitively, not on the lunar cycle. Now let's finish. The fifth and sixth days continue the same pattern. Yahuwah creates during the day, then it is evening, and then it is morning before sunrise the next day. And here's the Sabbath. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them, and on the seventh day God, Yahuwah, ended his work, Sabbath, which he had made, and he rested, Sabbath, on the seventh day from all his work, which he made. 
and God, Yahuwah, blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested, Sabbath, from all his work, which God, Yahuwah, created and made. The creation day must be Yom, 24 hours, not just 12, based on this. To say evening and morning only is to say creation is not six days, but only three. And that's inaccurate to abundant scripture, which makes it clear he created in six and rested the seventh. One cannot force the word for morning here as 12 hours of daylight, period. It is only morning. Nor, for that matter, is the word evening really the entire night, but sunset to midnight in this passage. We know this. It's not new. You can't have 24 hours and yet only pick out 12 and say that defines the entire day. It can't. Every day starts with Yahuwah creating such as, and God said, Yahuwah said, he creates from sunrise to sunset. That period is missing from this traditional thinking. And that is nonsense. Then it's evening and morning. Evening, sunset to midnight, and morning, midnight to sunrise. And the next day begins, and Yahuwah said. That is the progression of this account. The day begins at sunrise, according to the New Testament, especially Messiah's death and resurrection, which we even charted out in a timeline. According to Moses in the Passover story, in the Exodus as well as the manna, the Old Testament has abundant references to this, as we also covered outside of that. Jubilees, the authority on the calendar, condemns the moon as the measure of the day, and Sabbath for that matter, and installs the sun as that measure, always has been. Enoch agrees, and so does the creation account in Genesis 1, as well as all the rest. All of these come into agreement as they should and must. However, to attempt to insert the moon injects chaos that could never fit scripture. And let's not forget that it is the moon cult of Babylon, which is called Judaism today, that sets forth such calendar. And that is to be tested and rejected if it doesn't match scripture. We're showing you it does not. Thank you for watching our Sabbath series. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the bell. Over 250 videos now for you to test. Links as the top pin in comments and in the description box. Many available in English and Tagalog. Don't forget, like us on Facebook at The God Culture Space hyphen Space Original. We only have one YouTube and one Facebook page. Share this video with others and check out our website at thegodculture.com. Always remember to prove all things for yourself. We love you all. Yahuwah bless and Shabbat Shalom or Sabbath peace if you are watching this on the Sabbath. Stay safe and Yah bless to all.